Today we're going to make a delicious oven roasted turkey with vegetables. Let's get started. Hello everybody. Today we're going to roast a turkey in the oven. Just a classic style roasted turkey in the oven. What I have here is a whole turkey which is totally thawed out. I've removed the bag of a liver, heart, and gizzards, anything that's in the neck cavity. I also removed the neck from the body cavity. So we just have a thawed out turkey. Everything is removed. Now I'll be using a classic poultry seasoning, a pre-mixed poultry seasoning, which you can just get at the store. And I'm also going to add a second layer of flavor or seasoning by using my Texas style rub, which I've used in a number of videos. And I'll put a description below for the ratios of that. It's basically salt, pepper, celery seed, onion, and garlic powders, all granulated. So we're going to put a layer of each on that, and we're going to oil it first. So the first thing I'll do, let me get this roasting pan out of the way to give me more room. I'll just set that aside. So we have our turkey. And in order to help the seasoning stick a little better and to aid in browning and everything else, I'm just going to spray it with some avocado oil. You can use any kind of oil you want if you like canola oil. I want to use olive oil because that uh, isn't good for higher temperature cooking like this. So I'm just spraying this avocado oil all over, as you can see. Now whenever you're working with uh, turkey, chicken, any type of raw poultry like that, use safe handling techniques. Try to keep your surface clean, you know, before and afterwards. And, and wash everything and sanitize everything. So I'm going to try to use gloves and be as careful as I can. But at home, you know the drill. Clean everything afterwards. So here we go. We have it all oiled up. Now I'm going to season it with poultry seasoning. I like to take it out of if you buy it in the plastic jars or in larger quantity in bags. I like to put it into these restaurant style shakers and just put a quick label on it. So real simple. All right. We just sprinkle it all around, get the wings, okay. and now I'm just going to flip it over here. Come on, baby. There we go. Get our breast meat real good here, our breast, the skin over the breast meat, I should say. Now, I still have the legs tied together with the flap of skin as they come. And I'm going to tuck the wings under. I'm not going to time. I'm going to tuck them. So that's the poultry seasoning. Now I'm going to use the Texas style rub seasoning. Oh, and if you want, you can put some, you know, seasoning in the cavity. And we're also going to season the, you know, the back side here. Now, I'm going to transfer it to our roasting pan, and then we're going to do one more thing to keep it extra juicy. So we have our pan, and we're going to flip it over. Oh, I forgot to tuck the wings under. I'll show you how to do that. You just grab them, and basically, let's see if I can do this, flip it underneath, like so. And now I'll get the, oops, I'll get the other side. Oops. There. Okay. Now. Oops. Okay. Okay. So we have it nice in here. We have our breast side up. And some of the seasonings came off. Now if that happens to you, you know, just, just if you want to, just put a little more. That's not a problem. Alright. Give me a second to get this tray out of here, and I'm going to show you the next step before we put it in the oven. Okay, I've cleaned up the area a little bit, and I'll show you the next step. What we're going to do to ensure a nice, moist turkey. Now, you can brine this. A lot of people like to brine their turkey several, you know, for a day in advance, put in a, a salt water bath in the fridge. I didn't do that, instead I'm just going to inject it, or with a marinade or a broth. In this case you can use a chicken broth or a turkey broth, 
and just get your marinade injector needle and this is real simple and just you know fill it up like so and start putting it in the bird wherever you want to so first I'll go on the legs and just you just you know as you see I don't know if you can see on the camera it plumps up as I inject the broth I'll just keep putting in there and I'll put a little more in this leg okay and when you're doing this I like to have a big cup and a little cup this is the clean broth and I pour it into here as I use it because whatever you don't use in this cup you're gonna have to discard because it's contaminated with the raw poultry juices now as we go into the breast here let's do the same thing and if you see some come out that's okay that's fine so what we're doing here is getting maximum you know the maximum amount of juice inside of the the breast meat especially because that can tend to be dry it's it's easy for that to be dry it's a lean part of the the turkey even if you cook it perfectly you can still have the breast meat will always be slightly drier naturally than, than your darker cuts of meat on here. So I think that's about it. Maybe just a little bit more in that leg. Okay, there you have it. Our turkey's all set to go. Now, as you see, I have a, a bowl of vegetables, and I'm going to surround this with some vegetables. But if you want to, you can actually put the turkey in now to get a head start. So I'm going to preheat the oven to 325 degrees. And this is about, I believe, a 15-pound turkey. So I'm just going to set the, the oven to a four hours. This one has a timer. But I'm actually going to cook it by temperature. So since we're going to go by temperature, there's two ways to, to do that here. And I'm going to show you uh, two common ways to do that. I don't like the plastic pop-ups. I like to go by temperature. You've seen me use a roasting thermometer before in some of my videos. You could put a classic roasting thermometer in the breast meat. And that's a great way to go. And you want to get 165 minimum in the breast tissue. And the legs are probably going to be 180, 185 or so when you do that. But don't worry about that. Or you can use, what I like to use, is a wireless thermometer. And this uh, is linked up to your smartphone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two probes, put them into the breasts, and then turn this on, set it to turkey, which is automatically uh, preset for 165. And it will alert me on my phone wherever I may be, which is great. So in order to use this, you'll just slide the probes in like so. And these will be long enough to uh, reach out of the oven. They, the probes won't get hurt by uh, being pinched in the oven door. That's not a problem. So I just like to put one probe in each breast, like so. All right. We'll put it in. I don't know if this will pick up on camera. I'll try to show you real quick. And it's showing right now, since it's coming up, it's room temperature turkey, and I'm going to set the, the presets. Oh, I have to do that on the phone. I'm sorry. On my tough phone, which I don't have handy here, I'm going to set it to probes 1 and 2 to turkey. It's a turkey preset for 165. And then it will display on here, and it will alert me when it's finished. So I'm going to put this in a 325 oven right now, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the vegetables. A very simple clean and cut and then we're going to put it around the turkey inside this pan but we can get it starting started cooking ahead of time and save some time so I'll be right back okay I've cleaned up a little bit I got ready to do my vegetables and I just wanted to show you that uh, app real quick it's called easy barbecue and that's for the wireless thermometer and I'll hold this up hopefully you can see that on screen but it's set for probes one and probes two to do turkey well done at 165 degrees and right now it says it's uh 55 in one probe and 54 in the other. They're both in the breasts and the deepest part of the breast you saw me insert them. So this will alarm when it hits 165. So what's going to happen is naturally one will signal probably right before the other. They won't be at the same time. They're usually a few minutes apart. You'll want to wait until the second probe or the last probe signals because you want both to be a minimum of 165. So one probe may read 170 and 165 when it's done. I'll let you know what that turns out to be. And that's going to be in a couple of hours. So, uh, just real quick, for the vegetables, I'm going to put some vegetables in there. I have some small, I believe there's a Yukon Gold potatoes. And what I'm going to do is, they're washed off, 
And some of them I'm just going to leave as is with the skins. But I think I'm going to peel uh, maybe two or three. And I'm going to do something special with those at the end. So put uh, maybe these three I'm going to peel. I'm just going to, and I'm going to oil all these and season them. Then I also have an onion that I'm going to uh, cut up. As you see, some carrots and some celery. So I won't bore you with all that. I'll just show you a little bit of, of what I do. Um, for peeling the potatoes, I like to use a ceramic peeler. I think they're a lot easier to use than the metal peelers. They seem to be a lot sharper, and they seem to have a lot smoother uh, cutting action for me. Um, it's really just a personal preference. I also prefer the vertical style for the potatoes like this. So that's, that's all I do. You know, simple, everybody knows how to peel a potato. And I'm going to leave these whole. So I'm going to put these in here. I'm going to peel the other two and show you that. Same thing with carrots. Now carrots, if I have it handy here, I'm going to get my horizontal peeler because I prefer to use a, a, a horizontal on the carrots. Oops. There we go. Because I just think that works a lot better. Now also what I'm going to do with the carrots is cut the, the top and the bottom. Just trim that a little bit. And you see, I just, again, I like to use ceramic peelers. So you, you can use a peeler to go over the top like that if you want, or you can just get your knife, cut the top, the bottom. Now for the carrots, I'm also going to put oil and seasoning on those, and I'll show you that step. When I like to cut these, I don't like them to be too thick. I'm going to cut it, maybe I'll cut this in half. But for the thicker portions, sometimes I'll just, uh, you know, have it like that. So we're going to put oil on those. Now, for the celery, similar thing. The top's already cut off. If you want to, cut a little bit more off the, the bottom here. And if the tops are starting to get brown or whatever, depending how they are, just cut the top off. I already had cut the top off before, I'm just uh, demonstrating that. And for the celery, again, I'm going to cut it you know, a couple inch pieces. And then for these, maybe I'll just split these, like so. A little oil and season those. So let me finish. Oh, and the onion, again, I'm just going to slice this up. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done and when we get ready to oil and season. So I'll show you that step in a minute or two as soon as I get these all peeled up. Be right back. Okay, I have the vegetables all cleaned and cut, and this is just representation of what some of them look like, the rest are in the bowl. And what I'll do next is put them all in the bowl. Now the onions, I just kind of cut them in uh, eighths, so I cut them in quarters and then again, so you can see they're just like a chunk. So I put everything in a large bowl. Put it all in here. Slide the cutting board out of the way. And then I just like to cover them with some kind of oil. You can use a canola oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil, avocado oil works great. I'm just going to put quite a bit in there. And now, just sort of get that oil all over them. Oops, we lost one. There. So now I have oil all over them. Now now we're going to add our seasonings and toss again. I'm going to do the same thing I did to the, uh, to the turkey. We're going to use some poultry seasoning. I'm going to sprinkle that on there. And then we're going to add our Texas rub. And then put a little more. I like to season them up very well. That was our Texas rub and some poultry seasoning. Now, you can put them in now with the turkey, but the turkey is going to be in there for at least, I'd say, two and a half, three hours. And that's a little bit long for the vegetables. Um, you can do that right away, or you can wait for, say, an hour and a half or two hours and then put them on the turkey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait about an hour or so and then I'm going to put them in the roasting pan 
around the turkey or under the roasting rack. Whatever is more convenient for you and how it fits in your pan that you're using. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and then in about, I don't know, say about an hour and a half, I'll bring you back, we'll bring out the turkey, see what it looks like, put the vegetables on it, and then finish roasting it. See in about an hour and a half. Okay, it's only been about 45 minutes, um, so I'm coming back a lot sooner because I've been watching the temperatures and it's cooking a lot faster than I thought. So right now we're probably about one, I believe it said 135 to 140 degrees. So that's because it was totally thawed out. Again, your times are going to vary. So we're close enough to the point that I want to get these vegetables in. So, and I'm going to change the game plan. I'll bring, I'll bring that out and show it to you, but I said I was going to put these along the turkey in the roasting pan. But I have enough room in the oven to put these on their own individual pan. And that just makes it a little easier. So, again, if you just want to use one pan, put them in the roaster pan. That's fine. And I'm going to just put them in this separate sheet pan and put them in the oven. Now I'm going to put this sheet pan in there, but I'm going to pull the turkey out and show it to you what it looks like. I'm just going to look at that. So let me put this in the oven. Let me grab my silicone mitts and we'll pull the turkey out so you can take a look at it and uh, see what it looks like. Here we go. Had to be careful with the temperature probe here. So we're reading about 133 and 147, depending on the probe placement. So we're going to go by the, the lowest one, which is 133. That needs to hit 165. As you can see, we're very golden brown. Uh, starting to get golden brown all over. So this is looking great. And we just have to put it in there and let it get up to temperature. Now again, this is cooking a lot faster because it was uh, very thawed out, more thawed out than, you know, perhaps typically when you're partially frozen or fully frozen even, it's going to take longer. So don't necessarily go by the times I'm telling you, I'm just giving you a reference, but always go by temperature. So I'm guessing this is going to take a good 45 minutes to an hour to finish to get up to temperature completely. That's why I put our vegetables in. They're cooking, the turkey's going back in at 325 until it reaches 165 degrees. So go by temperature, not time, let me put this back in. Okay, the turkey's back in the oven, and I'll see you back here, like I said, when it reaches 165 degrees. See you then. Okay, I've just pulled it out of the oven. It's red hot. My probes are reading uh, 167 and 180, now it says 165. But before I pulled it out, I quickly double-checked with an instant read thermometer. And you'll want to do the same, because when you put the probes in, you're, you're approximating the deepest part, but you might be off. So let me just stick this probe in. And I'm getting 176. Go over here. I'll just push that in. 180. Maybe we'll go in here. I am getting 160. Right about 165 on the money. 164.9. As it says, it'll hit the 165. We're close enough for that. The legs I know will be done. Let me try on this one. And to this thigh section here, 178. So we're fully cooked. So again, you want to check a couple of places to make sure you're a minimum of 165. Now, let me pull these probes out first of all. These are going to be hot. So I'm just going to, let me put this glove on so I don't burn myself. Because I know they're very hot. Okay. Now... I'm not going to do anything with this for at least 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to keep cooking, and I want those juices to settle down. Actually, I can hear the crispy skin. Let me use my wolf claws. Okay, we'll set our turkey there. And now, what I'm going to do is show you how to make some gravy. Temperature probes here. Now, I don't have a lot of juice in here from the turkey, so I'm going to add some of that clean broth we saved. Remember, we injected the turkey with chicken or turkey broth? And I'm just going to put that into this roasting pan. Let me get the roasting rack out of here. Better put these on properly. This is very hot also. This pan is red hot. I just pulled that out of the oven, which if you recall, was at 325 degrees. So it's very, very hot. All right. We have our 
rack over there. Now, I've added that broth, and it's been in here, what, about half a minute or a minute. So that's warming up, and now I'm just using a whisk. Oh, by the way, this uh, roasting pan is a Curtis Stone roaster. A lot of times I have questions about what I'm using. And this is a Curtis Stone uh, roasting pan. You can find that on uh, HSN. It has a non-stick coating, so that's why I'm just using a uh, silicone covered whisk, you know, to prevent any type of scratching. Splashing a little bit here, that's okay. So uh, what I'm trying to do is use that broth to lift up the brown bits and get that nice uh, flavor for a gravy we're going to make. So I'm going to show you how to make a non-traditional style gravy. I've done this in one of my other videos. If you've watched my uh, turkey in a new wave oven video, I believe I've used this technique in that one. So that's good. You know, just mix it around the best you can. Now, what I'm going to do is put that into a blender. I'm going to take this hot broth and pour it into our container, our blending container. Just pour it all in there like so. Now, give me a second, I'm going to take this over to the sink, and then I'm going to get our roast vegetables, and you'll see what I'm going to do. So now, I have our, our original uh, turkey drippings, and we've added our broth to the pan, we put it in here. Now, I need some tongs. Remember the potatoes that I peeled? Well, I have a reason for that. I'm going to put it in here, and that's how we're going to thicken our gravy. We're going to use the natural starches of the potato to thicken our drippings, and turn it into a gravy. So I'm just going to put one potato in there. You know, and if you want to, if you want to add some onion flavor, feel free to add some of your onion that you made in here. There's nothing wrong with that. Now the rest of these I'll put around the turkey to garnish it. But I want to show you how to make this gravy. Now, when you do this in a blender, you need to be careful. Make sure to have your, your center out of the top. And uh, because when you start to blend the hot juices, you're going to create a lot of steam and it's going to build up some pressure. So you need to let that pressure off. So I'm going to use one of these silicone mitts on top of the blender um, just to, to hold it down and to be careful. So pulse it slowly and you'll see how this works. So let me turn this on on a low speed. I'm just going to slowly turn it off. See, I'm letting the steam out. Okay, it's as simple as that. So we didn't use a roux, you know, we didn't use flour, cornstarch, we just used the freshly roasted vegetables, which will also add some more flavor. So now you can either put it into a bowl or a nice little insulated uh, gravy server. You could strain this if you want, but the Vitamix uh, takes care of making it very, very fine. So, I, I don't think you can see this very well on the camera. Let me see if you can uh, lower that there. So we're going to leave this set for a couple minutes. This is an insulated uh, gravy carafe. So give me a couple of minutes to clean this up. we got to let the turkey rest anyway before I carve it. Oh, let me just hold it up here and show you. Look at that. Huh? Isn't that great looking? Look at that. That's a beautiful turkey. So let me, I want to see the juices, a lot of juice. So let this cool for about 15 minutes. I'll clean up, put the vegetables around it, and then we'll cut some and try it with our homemade gravy. See you in about 15 minutes. Okay, everyone, it's been resting about, I don't know, about 10 to 15 minutes. And I'll just recap real quick, give it a couple more minutes to rest. We took our turkey, we coated it with some oil, and then we put poultry seasoning, and then my Texas-style rub mix, which is salt, pepper, celery seed, onion, garlic, all granulated. Put it on there with the poultry seasoning, all over, inside and out. At that point, we then took uh, for turkey broth, whatever you have on hand, fresh or store-bought, and we used the marinade injector, and we injected it into the breast, the thighs, the legs, and that's just to add a lot of extra juiciness to the turkey. We did that, and then we put it into a preheated oven, at 325 degrees. Now this turkey was well thawed because it was on the counter here waiting for the video so that brought it closer to room temperature. 
I cooked it by temperature. So just use time as a rule of thumb. Really you want to use oven roasting thermometers or wireless thermometers like I use. So enough talking, let's get started. Oh, remember we made that gravy using the roasted potatoes and some onion. So don't forget how we made that homemade gravy in the Vitamix. Now, ah, I can't wait to get started. Let's see. We'll just cut that leg off of there. Now we'll just carve into the piece of the breast meat here. Ah, nice, crispy, golden brown skin. Whoops! <laughs> Look at that. I'm trying to get up to the camera. Okay. Put that on the plate. And this is very, the skin is nice and crispy. It's still very hot. I should have let it rest a little longer. As you can see, it's, it's actually falling apart on me here. Sorry about that. Let me try to get another nice piece. So you can see the steam is just pouring out of here. Let me try one more. Try to go a little thicker, maybe. Okay. This one held together a little better. And I'll hold this up to the camera. It's, it's uh, glistening from the juices here. I don't know if you can see that. So it looks very juicy and it's still very hot. Okay. Now, we'll put that aside. And don't forget, we got to have a little bit of our gravy to go with. I'll just pour some of that over it. And now, we're going to taste it. And this, this is very tender. In fact, I'm not, the knife isn't, when I'm pulling with the fork, it's pulling apart. It's that tender. So, I almost don't need the knife at all. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> wow. In fact, I'll cut this piece with the fork just to show you. I didn't need a knife. Mmm. 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 Very, very good. The gravy's phenomenal. Let me just try a small piece here without the gravy. Mm. Using that marinade, the uh, injector to put the, uh, the broth in there, the marinade injector, that helps quite a bit with keeping the breast and meat nice and juicy. The gravy is phenomenal. You know, we use the roasting juices and everything. It's just, it's great. So, you know, again, this is very easy to do. It's a classic old style method. Just using a plain old roasting pan. We did nothing fancy. We didn't have to do any fancy, any fancy covering or basting or anything. We just put oil on it. Now, that was another one of the key reasons why I covered it with oil in the beginning. Instead of just putting the seasonings on the bare skin. By coating with the oil first, the oil made a protective barrier to help keep the moisture inside the turkey. So that's why I highly recommend covering it with oil to lock in the juices. And again, I'll hold the uncut side up here so you can take a look and see how wonderful that is. And I'll show you the cut side too, just so you can see. I mean, this is a very delicious turkey. So I highly recommend that uh, you give the old classic style recipe a try. Very simple, basic vegetables, root vegetables, all the celery too. So the potatoes, carrots, celery, onions, all roasted. We put those in a separate pan, but you can put them in the roasting pan. They were covered with oil too, and also the two types of seasonings, the poultry seasoning and my Texas rub seasoning covered the vegetables. And it's a delicious, uh, wonderful meal. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'd like you to try this recipe. Let me know how it works out. Leave a comment below if you try this and how it works for you. And uh, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, again, leave a comment. And please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching. And this is really a great recipe. So uh, give it a try. You'll really like it. And the gravy, too. Don't forget the gravy. Thank you.
crispy skin. Very, very, very good. Mm. Don't forget the gravy. Thank you for watching.